Hello, everybody. It is Friday. How is everybody doing? Um, like I said before, I'm going to do trigger warnings for every single game, every single time I stream it, um, just to have it. I added one from my, from yes, not yesterday, Wednesday's list, uh, ageism also seems to be very present in this game. So um, just some things to keep in mind. Uh, keep the, I'll keep those up for a while. But um, yeah, it is Friday. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I just uh, just got done eating dinner, and I made myself a nice salmon dinner for my Hello Fresh. Um, so it was very good, and I have it for lunch tomorrow. So I'm excited. I have some tea with me. Some tea. It's high bit. Okay, midnight. Really, you were doing so well. Oh, I was just about to tell everybody how cute you looked. Oh, how cute you looked asleep on the little mini shelf that's built onto my desk. You looked so cute. And you were so good, and you weren't crawling over the desk or jumping off of high shelves and causing a ruckus and making mischief and being a menace. Being mid to the menace, but look at this snuggly little girl. Oh my goodness, this snuggly little girl. But as soon as I started talking, you were like, oh, camera's on, gotta be the center of attention. Absolutely have to be, it's required. She's like, my people need to see me. <laughs> so silly. So silly. What are you doing? What are you doing with that paw there? You gonna put it on my face? So silly. Here you go. Oh, let's go back on that shelf. Lay on down, baby girl. You are fast asleep. Don't act like, don't bite me. Gummy. Little gummy cat trying to bite me with her gums. Um, anyway, trigger warnings for the game. Um, playing Ace Attorney again because I love Ace Attorney, um, and I really, really am enjoying doing the accents and stuff, uh, even though I'm terrible at them, and uh, I hope I'm not annoying, but if I am, I guess I'm sorry, question mark? Um, yeah, oh man, it has been, it has been a week, y'all, like, work has made me really tired, and I... I was struggling, so um, I really look forward to, to these streams, and um, I'm looking forward to a nice, relaxing weekend. Well, actually, I'm probably not even gonna relax. I'm probably gonna make some, make some hashtag, hashtag content. Um, but it's, I wanna, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just gonna do whatever tickles my fancy on, on, on the weekend. That's, it's, it's all about, it's all about me this weekend. But right now, it's all about Ace Attorney. So I'm gonna switch on over to. My game. Let's just jump right into it, cause I uh, we got a mystery to solve. You feel? We got we got a mystery to solve. Is that transition? Come on. You know you wanna. You know you wanna. All right. So when last we left our uh, ragtag team of lawyers and detectives and uh, and whatnot, ooh, intense music was playing. That's what was happening because we believe we have found the true murderer. The true culprit of the Ice 7 incident from 17, no 17, 18 years ago. Sorry, I still have the seven in my head from 17. Um, I never finished explaining my tea. It is hibiscus berry tea that I bought from uh, a local place. It's very, very good. A little watered down because the ice melted, which is fine. I added a little bit of sugar to it and a little bit of alcohol to it. It's fine. It's a, it's a Friday. And I've, I've been working really hard, so I'm going to treat myself to a little bit of a adult beverage, okay? I didn't put that much in it either. It's very good tea. It's very, very good tea. Um, I actually had the tea last night, too. I bought myself two cups of it, so I'm going to have one for last night and I have one for tonight. Um... But I'm babbling about tea, and you- I'm not- I'm spilling the tea that you- you don't want to see spilled. We should spill the tea on this, uh, Gustavia, who's probably our murderer. I know, right? God, I so wish lawyers were real. I mean... Clearly it's fantasy, though. Like, it just- It is what it is. Like, sometimes the realest things just don't exist, but, you know. Ace Attorney does a good job of, uh really making lawyers feel like they're real, you know? <laughs> uh, anyway, Gustavia says, I shall prove my innocence to you, sir prosecutor. Objection. 
Objection! Judge Courtney, is that your answer? Do you intend to bury the truth of the I-7 incident before it can be brought to light? Overruled. I have to do my little calibration phrase for my accent. I merely believe in the judgments of the goddess of law. Ultimately, those who render judgment are only human. As long as humans control the law, there is no guarantee that every verdict is correct. Ooh, we get real deep. If you're going to help conceal the truth, I will not hold back. Hmm. I'm looking forward to it. Lady Justine, what should I do now? You are being suspected because you set off the poison gas. Can you tell us the reason why you opened the Pisces case? Oh, he puts away his candy. Okay, understood. I came to see Sir Dover's works from 18 years ago. However, I accidentally entered the museum a half hour before it opened. Miss Hall, there was nobody at the entrance, correct? Since I saw the criminal with a... <laughs> Gosh. Try that again. Since I saw the criminal from 18 years ago might be coming. I had no security guards in place. I didn't even lock the doors. I was very busy with opening the preparation, so there was nobody on the first floor. In addition, I locked every palace door aside from the other one. I see. Gosh, I thought I felt like a string on my shoulder. Either that or a bug, which is worse. <laughs> oh, hi Kate, how you doing? How you doing? This must have been done in order to lure the criminal into the Autumn Palace. Which is why he ended up entering the Autumn Palace. It's already suspicious that he snuck into the museum in the first place. The gallery should remain silent. Oh. Unless you have evidence that can prove his testimony false, I will not allow any objections. Gallery? This isn't even a courtroom! Now then. Why did you open the Pisces case? I wish to view Sir Dover's handiwork up close. The Gemini sculpture. No, it was actually the Pisces, wasn't it? The lid had been frozen shut, so I borrowed the burner to open it. So he's the one with the burner. We haven't actually been using that piece of evidence yet. So it's bound to come into play. But as soon as I opened the lid, poison gas began pouring out. That's quite a... Convenient testimony. It sounds like a total lie, doesn't it? Boom. There are parts of Mr. Gustavia's testimony that I have issues with as well. However, there's no evidence to disprove it. But that's... Would it not make sense for suspicion to fall on Lady Catherine before myself? She may have intended to release the poison gas haphazardly. Haphazardly. <laughs> There's a, there's a podcast I listen to, and the mom of one of the podcasters is German. And the podcaster has told this story before about how her mom didn't quite know how to read that word at first when she was, like, trying to learn English, so she pronounced it haphazardly. And so now, every single time they say it on the podcast, they pronounce it like that, and so it makes me giggle. Haphazardly. Objection. Kate turned on the sprinklers as soon as the gas was released. She was specifically targeting the person who triggered the trap. Mr. Gustavia, you were her only target. You... You are willing to accept the words of this criminal as the truth? Miss Hall must atone for her crimes. However, the same can be said for the criminal from 18 years ago. Sir Prosecutor, it seems you wish to suspect me to the bitter end. However, I had no reason to murder Sir Dover. If there is no evidence to suggest that I killed him, you cannot suspect me. Ugh. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you prove that Mr. Gustavia is the criminal? All we know for sure is that Mr. Gustavia fell victim to the poison gas. No matter how strange his behavior was, it won't prove he committed the murder. But that's... Mr. Shields, is there nothing we can do? 
Well, if there isn't any evidence, we should try reorganizing the facts. If Mr. Gustavia was the one who killed Mr. Dover, there must have been a motive. Motive. Mr. Gustavia himself is denying such a that such a motive exists. <laughs> it's not easy to take another person's life. Eighteen years ago, your old man also discussed motive with Prosecutor Von Karma. Oh, am I finally going to get to use my German accent that I practiced and I did not even get to use once? Not even once last time? Okay, wait. I gotta do my caliber. Why is the voice like mine? Okay. Why is the voice like mine? You claim their collaboration is irrelevant. If Mr. Gustavia and Mr. Dover's relationship had turned sour... Wait, is that it? Wait, hold on. It could serve as a motive for murder. Oh, God damn it! I wanted to use my new German accent that I could do! <laughs> damn it! I got excited for nothing! We couldn't... God. We couldn't talk with Mr. Gustavia 18 years ago, but this time, things are different. If we connect everything we learned so far, the truth might be revealed. Yes, I suppose so. It seems I must re-examine the information from 18 years ago. I must recall all the details that have remained unexplained. Okay, is it? So, the club finger marks on the picture frame. What's your doing? I forgot. I'm glad they reiterated that because I had totally forgotten whose <laughs> who's they were. Delicia denied leaving the finger marks on the frame. If they were left by Mr. Gustavia, he may have been trying to view the angel's recipe. Monsieur Master asked me to change the film in the camera. It seems the film he prepared in advance wasn't enough. There wasn't enough film? It seems the number of photos he took didn't match up with the, num with the amount of film remaining. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, he told me himself to... Goodness gracious. He told me himself it might have been a m just a mistake, though. The information my father collected 18 years ago was certainly not for naught. It was not for naught. It just got all knotted up. How naughty. <laughs> if there is no evidence, then I shall use logic to reveal the truth. Ooh, here we go. Okay. Uh... Um... Oh, shit. Okay, I'm gonna connect Angel's Recipe with the remaining film. Because he was probably trying to take pictures of the Angel's Recipe. Boom. If he had photographed the contents of the Angel's Recipe, he wouldn't need to steal it. Perhaps Mr. Gustavia used Mr. Master's camera to take the pictures. If he had stolen the actual recipe book, the police would have found out. Ah, see. Pictures, eh? The problem is that is the time at which he entered Mr. Master's room. Mr. Gustavia could have moved around freely during the afternoon tea, right? Because it seems both him and Mr. Dover did not participate in the afternoon tea. Ooh, important, important fact. If I remember correctly, the only time we can prove that Mr. Dover was still alive is... I can't use my German accent! Why is the voice like why? The victim was not seen, as he stayed locked up in his room after the contest had begun. The only one who could have unlocked the locked rooms was Jeff Master. Ooh, we got it now, y'all! We got it now! A little too late, but we got it! <laughs> was Master's desserts all that you ate? Actually, no. After the afternoon tea, I also ate Icy's desserts. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry I keep sniffing. My sinuses are starting to act up all of a sudden. After the contest began, Isaac Dover was locked up in his room. If we assume he was killed at some point before Delicia snuck into his room, then there is a high chance that he was killed before the afternoon tea was over. Okay. So... The partnership had turned sour, which is why he was murdered. Right? 
I mean, the T doesn't really fit there. Mr. Gustavia, you collaborated with the victim Isaac Dover to create your desserts, didn't you? Oh, it seems you'll know about my secret. Mr. Shields told me about it. Mr. Dover handled the design while you were in charge of the taste. Is that correct? Ugh. Back then, my training had been insufficient. It seems you worked together through the semifinals, but not during the finals. Why is that? We both wished to compete in the finals against Sir Master on our own merits. Objection! You must have also helped with Isaac Dover's dessert even during the finals. Oof. What makes you able to declare something like that? Oh, he's sweating. Didn't you tell Prosecutor Von Karma about it yourself, 18 years ago? That you cooperated until the day before the finals? <laughs> the sculptures in Mr. Dober's room were all made out of sherbet. Such an amount would most likely need to be left overnight to freeze. Which means Mr. Gustavia prepared Mr. Dober's sherbet in advance the day before. <laughs> That's right. So you realize Gustavia's cooperation ended the day before the finals. Then, why did Mr. Dover not help Mr. Gustavia in return? The views of the dead are of no concern to me. <laughs> I got the German accent now. I got the German accent now. I got the German accent now. Why did Isaac Dover not help you in return? It's probably, look, I just want to say, it's not a perfect German accent. It's not, like, super great, but it's better than it was, okay? Before, I did not have any semblance of a voice for, for Von Karma, but now I got it. And I'm a little, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, it's my W, okay? Let me take my W. Really, every visual novel should let us use our, exactly, sir. This is very, very true. I agree. I want, I want all my visual novels to have a plethora of accents. A whole international cast from every corner of the globe. Every character is canonically German. That would be... What a twist. What a, Ace Attorney AU. Everyone's actually German. It's not explained. It doesn't need to be. They're just German. If there is a reason why your partnership with Isaac Dover broke down... That would be a motive for murder. Oops. Oof. That could be a possibility. However, Sir Dover and I ended our partnership peacefully. A peaceful breakup? That's hard to imagine. Girl! Girl, you're like 17! <laughs> Not to mention it's absurd to think that I killed Sir Dover in Sir Master's room. I couldn't have killed Sir Dover while Sir Master was also there making his desserts. I guess that's kind of true. In other words, there is no way I could have committed the murder. That's not true. If there was a moment when Mr. Master was absent from the room... I could prove that it was possible for Mr. Gustavia to commit the murder. I only have two options, so I'm going to connect them. <laughs> Isaac Dober was alive up until the uh, up until the afternoon tea began. Ergo, that is the only time when Ms. when Gustavia could have killed Dober. Prosecutor Edgeworth, are you satisfied? <laughs> Sorry, but I'm far from satisfied. It's too late. <laughs> Wait, I was I was gonna say it's too late to apologize. I was thinking of in my brain. I was like, sing "Satisfied" from Hamilton, and my brain was like this one, and it was not the same song. <laughs> I'm an embarrassment. Anywho, <laughs> I'm just gonna move past that one <laughs> because I'm finally starting to see the truth behind this case. Are you saying you found some evidence to show us that truth? No, there is no need to present any evidence. Since we can just have Mr. Gustavia tell us the truth. Ah, so this is where you use that, right? Indeed. Mr. Gustavia, there is one thing I want you to tell me. Fake fan, oh my god. <laughs> I said, Mr. Gustavia, there is one thing I want you to tell me. He's meditating. Oh, 
What? What is it? During the finals of the contest, you made your dessert. You made your desserts on your own. I wanted to compete for the title of world's greatest pastry chef on my own merits. If that was truly the case, you would have competed on your own merits from the start. I want you to tell me why it was necessary for you to cooperate with Isaac Dover. Oh, what we gonna do now? Is this time for logic chess? Yes! It's been a minute. I don't think we actually have done any... I think this is the first logic chess of this chapter. No, 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 no. We did it with Larry. We did it with Larry. This is the... Wow, though. It took a while. Anyway. <clears throat> During the contest 18 years ago, Mr. Gustavia collab... Oh my gosh. <sighs> Sorry, my body is like attacking me. During the contest 18 years ago, Mr. Gustavia collaborated with Mr. Dover. I wonder, what made them decide to cooperate in the first place? That's what I need to draw out from him, but... Oh, he really protected. Hmm. It seems he pretends to meditate when things aren't going his way. Like a petulant little child. First, I'll ask him- I'll ask about why he collaborated with Dover. The truth has been hidden for 18 years. That ends today! Logic chess. Begin! Alright. Why did you decide to collaborate with Isaac Dover? Sir Dover and I were already acquaintances even before the contest began. Since he was interested in the contest, we simply decided to enter it together. Huh. Joining forces with a sculptor. You weren't confident in your own abilities? You know nothing about me. We wanted to make great works together. I will reveal all your lies for what they are. That's clearly the wrong answer. Because that's a very generic a- He's gonna agitate. Is that all? You bore me with your empty threats, sir, prosecutor. God, I need to be careful not, not to make Kayla's statements. Okay. I, this is gonna be a little tough, but we gonna do it. Okay, read opponent's reactions. Yes, yes, I know. Okay, let's try this again. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now we gonna wait and see. I say nothing. Sir Dover's son and my own attended the same elementary school. We all got along well from the start. Really? So were you going to share the title of world's greatest pastry chef together? And now he meditates. Uh, I'm gonna wake up. Wake him up. Aha! The music stopped, so that was correct. <laughs> As expected, he pretends to meditate when things aren't going his way. Mr. Dover was a sculptor. I doubt he had any interest in the title of the world's greatest pastry chef. In that case, where did his true goal lie? <sighs> Indeed, my goal was the title of world's greatest pastry chef. However, Sir Dover's goal was the grand prize, the angel's recipe. I see. You cooperated because your interests were aligned. But there must have been a reason why your partnership soured. Sir Prosecutor, I am the victim of a poisoning. If you're going to suspect me in this matter, perhaps I'd better return to the infirmary. Wait a moment. In that case, you should end things soon. I am not a patient man. It seems he's trying to leave. I can't let that happen. He's still hiding something. Next, I should ask him about his true goal. Cool, I got my health back. I need to keep the pressure on him while being cautious of the time. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Did you have another goal? Uh, didn't you have another goal besides the title? The title alone doesn't seem to have much value. How dare the likes of you insult the title of a confectionery artist. My only goal was the title itself. I had no interest in anything else. My dream was to become the world's greatest pastry chef. It would be impossible with your skills. Haha. <laughs> no, but that's all. Oh, come on, man. Damn it. Okay, so I guess I have to wait until he meditates and then like... Um... Ooh. Did you want to appear on Mr. Master's TV show? I believe it was called Shake and Bake, was it not? No. I'm pretty sure it's called Piece of Cake. Would you really want to see me dance about while I make desserts? 
no, that probably wouldn't be too popular with the kids either. Exactly. I know my limitations. I am not interested in that kind of theatri theatrical tomfoolery. Sir Prosecutor, you should think about who you're talking to before asking questions. Damn. God, I understand. I should refrain from making unnecessary statements. Uh, the whole line of questioning was wrong? Jesus, okay. Alright, we'll, we'll wait and see on this one. 18 years ago, I was lacking in design sense. However, things are different now. Oh, are you saying you improved at your craft? Exactly, for I have trained at the Republic of Zheng Fa. God damn it, this is hard. I, I sh I've got too aggressive. I gotta, I gotta, okay. I gotta, I gotta calm down. I'm going a little too airy season right now. Uh. Wait. Yes, yes. At the time, I also studied Mr. Master's works. My buddy Eric was the world's greatest pastry chef once. Well, congratulations to Eric. <laughs> I would often wa oh god I would often watch his show with my son. So you were studying Mr. Master's work to improve your own skills. If you had his recipes, perhaps it would have been easier for you to become the world's greatest. Ugh. Perhaps. To a pastry chef, Sir Master's recipes were worth their weight in gold. And now he meditates. Oh, now we go. See, we got him. We got him. Becoming the world's greatest pastry chef was your goal. You should have also been interested in the grand prize, the angel's recipe. Ugh! The recipes of the world's greatest pastry chef. I would be lying if I said I, that I wasn't interested. However, I wouldn't think that simply being interested would be a problem. I wonder about that. The angel's recipe's true nature was not for making desserts, but cures. And all of the contest participants should have been aware of that. Ugh. Looks like I'm getting close. He isn't meditating anymore. Now to slowly but surely drive him into a corner. Wow, it really gives me all of my health back. That's really forgiving. Next, I'll ask what he planned to use the recipe book for. Um... Did you intend to win the angel's recipe and use it to make desserts? Of course. If I obtained the angel's recipe, I was going to use it in my training. I hear the angel's recipe was worth a lot of money. I don't know the exact details, but... That recipe book was much too valuable to be sold. Ah, he's meditating again. My condition may be worsening. I should get back to the infirmary. No, 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 no. Wait. I was too passive? Really? I finally get it where I'm- t Oh my god. I'm so bad at this. I must read my opponent. Okay. So. Now I shouldn't wait for him to meditate? He seemed to know quite a lot about the angel's recipe. Okay, so that was correct. I just... It was explained to all the contest participants at the beginning of the contest. <laughs> In that case, you must know about the recipe book's true nature. That it was not a recipe book for desserts at all. <laughs> Impressive, Sir Prosecutor. So you know the true nature of the angel's recipe. The angel's recipe. Some have called it the ultimate recipe book. The ultimate recipe <laughs> Man, maybe I should have done like a full Matakuma thing at the beginning of this case. A real, a body has been discovered. You're gonna find the ultimate recipe book for the ultimate, the ultimate pastry chef. Hope's Peak Academy. Jesus. It contained, oh God. It, it contained formulas for new medicines that were not yet on the market. He knew the recipes were actually formulas for new medicines. This could be a useful clue. 
the angel's recipe. Did you know its true value? Which we yes. Silly question that contains Star Master's best dessert recipes. And the pastry chef worth their salt was wanted. That's not we we just we literally just established that it did not. You may have studied design in Zheng Fa. However, your skills in lying could use more work. Ooh, got him. You just said earlier that the angel's recipe contained formulas for medicines. <laughs> you weren't interested in desserts. You wanted the medicine formulas. Does his son have a... Did you need a new medicine? Does his son have like a condition? Now, why would a pastry chef such as yourself be so interested in medicine? Perhaps what you were really after was the information about the new medicine. <clears throat> no! Ugh. I've underestimated you, Sir Prosecutor. Yes. My goal was more than just the title of the world's greatest pastry chef. At the time, my son was ill. There it is. I needed the recipe for the medicine. So far, we've had the ultimate bodyguard. Then we had the ultimate warden. That's true. We've had a lot of ultimates. <laughs> To protect my son's honor, I can say no more. Hmm, judging by the worried look on his face, I must have struck a nerve. Next, I need him to tell me more about his son's illness. This is it. This will be my final move of the game. What was your son like? What kind of person was your son? Ah, my boy, he loved the desserts I made. Did you enter the contest solely for your son? Sir Prosecutor, you could never understand the feelings a father has for his son. I wanted nothing more than to cure my boy's illness. I'm gonna wait, because I'm not gonna step on that one. Absolutely not. Until the semifinals, my son would always drop by the contest venue to play. Is that so? But his son wasn't there that time. Is that so? Wouldn't he get in your way? I doubt you had time to care for your son while you were challenging Mr. Master. That may be so, but I wanted to grant my son's wish. He said he always wanted to be the first to eat my desserts. About your son, no. If he was so sick, wouldn't it be difficult for him to come and play with you? Ooh, okay, so that was right. Ugh. My son's illness, it wasn't life-threatening. Hmm, that might serve as a clue. His son's got hypergusia, I bet. What was the name of your son's illness? Sir Prosecutor, how insensitive of you. My son was seriously ill. I will not be discussing this with the likes of you. There it is. It's not life-threatening, though. You told me your son's illness was not life-threatening. Is there really a need to be so secretive about it? Oh my gosh, if he has hypergusia and he couldn't taste his dad's dessert, it just hit me. Oh man. It was enough to keep him from living a normal life. That must have been difficult for your son. I tried everything to I could to cure his illness. It wasn't fair for the poor boy. He could never taste the desserts he loved so much. There it is! There it is! And now he meditates. Was it a taste disorder? The angel's recipe contains a cure for a certain illness. A remedy that could also cure Mr. Master's taste disorder. What? He had it too? He had it too, I see. So your son suffers from a taste disorder? I didn't think you'd figure it out so quickly. In order to cure your son's taste disorder, you needed the recipe book. Wasn't that your true goal? Is that you say? Based on how he's acted up until now, it appears he is still hiding something. It seems I don't have enough clues to proceed with this line of questioning. Maybe I should try another line of attack. Wow, okay, so I gotta go back. Uh, did the angel's recipe have the only cure? Yes, I- Though the medicine- oh gosh. Though the medicine is being sold everywhere now. At the time, the recipe book was my one and only option. 
That's why I continued making my desserts without joining the others for tea time. So you weren't interested in what Mr. Master was making. You sure seemed confident in your chances of winning. Hi, Sorcel! I couldn't be bothered to pay attention to the other contestants' desserts. But what? Didn't you have an interest in... You just said earlier that you studied Mr. Master's works. In addition, if your goal was to win the contest in order to get the medicine formula, you must have been curious about the other contestants' entries as well. Mm. There was time to sample the other desserts during the contest, but none of their entries had any flavor. So I didn't want to eat any of it. I suspect I may have been a bit nervous as well. So everything he ate tasted flavorless. This could be a useful clue. Okay, so either one, one of two things is true. Either everybody was playing to Mr. Master's sense of, like, looks, because Mr. Master had had stupid nap. Get out of my face, you stupid gnat! Anyway, sorry about that. So either they're playing to his, like, visual appeal because he can't taste anything, or Gustavia has hypercusia as well. I feel like it's probably the latter, but we'll keep we'll keep going. Um, I guess we can move on now with this, and we'll go. So we've got we got this. We moved through this. And then it was this one. Move through this. And now, now we have the new clue. Did you also have the illness? Being unable to taste anything regardless of what you eat. Such a bitter illness. That reminds me, didn't you say something similar earlier? None of their entries had any flavor, so I didn't feel like eating any of it, wasn't it? Perhaps your son wasn't the only one who suffered from a taste disorder. It's hard to imagine being a successful pastry chef without a sense of taste. Perhaps what you really wanted was to cure yourself? That's completely ludicrous. Eighteen years ago, I made those desserts all by myself. But didn't you collaborate? You just, you're talking in circles, my man. <laughs> it seems you've caught yourself in a contradiction. Didn't you cooperate with Isaac Dover in the contest? You can hardly say you made the desserts all by yourself. Oh boy. You must take great pride in your abilities as a pastry chef, but to betray your pride and cooperate with another contestant? You did it all to cure your own disease! Well done, Sir Prosecutor. It's as you say. The one with the taste disorder is not my son. It is I. No one knew. I've kept it a secret for 18 years. It doesn't matter how long a secret is kept. If you lie before me, I will expose it. Dane Gustavia and Isaac Dover were both trying to obtain the recipes for new medicines. Gustavia to cure his condition, and Dover, most likely, to sell the recipe book for money. For this reason, they entered the contest as a collaborative effort. And with that... Checkmate. Yay! I got my health back! Like, my actual health. The one that, like, really matters. <laughs> I did it! I won Logic Chess! <laughs> I have never told this to anyone. Well done. As you say, I developed a taste disorder 18 years ago. Taste disorder? It was a severe disorder. I was unable to discern any flavor at all. It's the one illness a pastry chef dreads above all. Those symptoms sound a bit different from Mr. Master's taste disorder. Mr. Master's condition is known as hypogeusia. It simply causes a decreased sensitivity to certain specific flavors. I'm sure it has caused Sir Master much pain, too. After all, no medication was available to cure it 18 years ago. In order to cure your taste disorder, you would need Mr. Master's angel recipe. <clears throat> <laughs> it's 
Hold on. Excuse me. <laughs> and that's why you entered the contest, am I correct? That was one of my goals, but I still had my sights set on the title of world's greatest. When it comes to making desserts, I won't lose to anyone. Even without the ability to taste, I still have the utmost confidence in my flavors. Oh? So, I presume you also prepared your dessert in the finals with the intent to win. That goes without saying. According to what Mr. Shields told us earlier, the evaluation of Mr. Gustavia's entry was... Oh god, what voice did I give him? I can't even remember. I guess I just gave him, like, a very lilting kind of... The ultimate newspaper salesman, the ultimate business owner, ultimate producer, ultimate bailiff, ultimate prosecutor, ultimate police chief. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> hey, don't forget ultimate thief. Ultimate thief. We got K in there. K's the ultimate thief. Up until the semifinals, Mr. Gustavia's flavors and design were to my liking. Unfortunately, both the taste and appearance of his finals entry left much to be desired. It seems the dessert you made for the finals was not rated highly in regards to flavor. <sighs> Mr. Gustavia, you will tell us about how you made your dessert during the finals. Very well. It seems I must teach the upstarts a lesson. Oh, we got another interrogation. Sir Dover and I cooperated until the finals. I handled the flavor, he was in charge of the design. However, for the finals, I wanted to challenge Sir Master with my own skills. I helped Sir Dover make his entry, but I made mine completely on my own. If the flavor of my entry wasn't good enough, my own lack of training was to blame. How about that, Sir Prosecutor? This is the truth of 18 years ago. Mm. I can't find any contradictions in his testimony. Well, of course, he isn't gonna fess up that easily. This guy's been on the run for 18 years, after all. Guess we'll just have to keep on pressing him until he breaks, eh? Yes. <laughs> it's just so straight. Yes. <laughs> Dessert for the finals. Um, hold it! Hold it! So Mr. Dover took care of the design while you handled the flavor. Sir Dover was a sculptor by trade. His sense of design was splendid. But he was just an amateur chef. We combined our strengths by working together. <laughs> you never did have much design sense, did you, Mr. Gustavia? Ugh. Oh, here he goes with his dumbass shit. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Wait a minute! Holy crap! Okay, we we got a glow up. We got a, a real glow up. Look at this. What do you think of this? Hmm. That's the symbol of Zheng Fa. Wow, a phoenix. That is really good. Whoa, you really have improved these past 18 years. <laughs> Behold, the fruits of my 18 years of training. I put my life and limb on the line for my dessert skills. It's true that I cooperated with Sir Dover 18 years ago up until the finals. However, for the finals, I wanted to challenge him with my own skill. Hold it! Oh my gosh, I dose. <laughs> Give me one second, y'all. <laughs> Sorry, my nose. Oh gosh. My sinuses are killing me. It's the freaking. It's probably the, the seasons are about to change. Um, anyway, so you were really serious about the title of World's Greatest Pastry Chef. Yes. Oh my goodness. Hello, Midna. You're back. <laughs> my sweet baby. Say hey. You gonna say hey to everybody again? You say hey to everyone? Say hey. <laughs> Alright. Continue on with your cat stuff. You wanna go back up on the shelf? Put your feet there. <laughs> there you go. Yes, confectionery is my life. Naturally, I wanted to be the world's greatest. 
But back then I was still inexperienced and I was no match for the better chef. But your goal was also to obtain the angel's recipe, right? Wouldn't the recipe book be worth more to you than the title? Oh shit, I forgot she was there. <laughs> I will not stand by and watch you badger a con convalescent man like this. Convalescent? He's... You know what? What does convalescent actually mean? Oh, a person recovering from an illness or operation. Wow, that is not... That is not what I thought that meant. I mean, I knew it was like related to like medical stuff. I did not think it was that simple. I thought it was like a little more complicated than that. Anyway, I learned something. Cool. I will not stand by and watch you badger a convalescent man like this. My gavel shall protect you, Mr. Gustavia. I, I realize he's still recuperating, but... Mr. Gustavia, do not yield to this devilish prosecutor. <clears throat> now then, please continue with your testimony. Gosh. I helped... Oh, gosh. I helped Sir Bilbo make his entry, but I made mine completely on my own. Hold it. So you helped Mr. Dover with his dessert, but made yours all by yourself. The ultimate acrobat, the ultimate actor, the ultimate flight attendant, the ultimate attorney, the ultimate ambassador. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we really... Everybody is like... What would Lada Hart be? Would she be the ultimate photographer? Or would she just be like the ultimate paparazzi? No, because then... Isn't there like an, a paparazzi in a... Apollo Justice, that's like a little more... Hmm. Ultimate spirit medium. Ultimate, ultimate coffee aficionado. Ultimate gangster. Anyway. No matter how you look at it, this seems odd. Why didn't Mr. Dover assist you? It matters not how it seems, but the truth. I do not know what Sir Dover was thinking. It's hard to prove if someone is lying about something that happened 18 years ago. Hey Kay, does your secret weapon also work as a lie detector? If it did, I'd have already stolen Mr. Edgeworth's spotlight. There's no need for that. I will expose this man's lies myself. Dane Gustavia, please continue with your testimony. Midna? No ma'am. No ma'am. Those are wires. We do not play with those. No ma'am. Up until the finals, I heard that you had received high praise for the flavor of your desserts. Was there some sort of accident during the finals? <sighs> Nothing of this sort. I simply was unable to taste my work due to my taste disorder. My intuition must have been off, that's all. Then, was your intuition fine while making Mr. Dover's entry? How could there be such a huge difference between the finals and the previous day? Are we sweating? This is suspicious. This is sus! Highly sus! Hmm, we're not getting anywhere at this rate. Should I change the topic? I should ask about Mr. Dover. You knew Mr. Dover before you entered the contest, right? Yes, I knew him well. Do it. No, don't tell her to do it. Don't encourage her. Mr. Dover. Oh, ooh, what is this? Then it wasn't a coincidence that you both participated in the contest. I heard about the contest, so I made the suggestion to Sir Dover. He always wanted money for his sculpting business. No, ma'am. You better not. I will move you. You'll lose your desk privileges. If I recall, Mr. Dover was a greedy man who was always after more money. Ooh, so the angel's recipe is really worth that much? Okay, the recipe book was certainly valuable 18 years ago. But nowadays, most of the medicines it contains are available commercially. Stupid gnat. I'm gonna get them all eventually, I swear. Ah, oh, that's a shame. In the end, it seems that each of the contestants had the angel's recipe as their goal. All those unanswered questions 18 years ago. I should already have the keys I need to unravel them. I must recall all of the information that Mr. Shields and my father gathered. Um, okay. 
Let's let's review. Let's 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 review. Let's review. Um okay, I don't think it's either of those. You know what? Wait, I should hold on. I wanna the one the one where it suggested I change the topic. Um Wait, no, I think it was the one before, I suppose. Was it this one? The one before? His son was tasting his stuff. Oh my gosh. Uh... Hold on. So you're sure there wasn't anything different between the semifinals and the finals? Yes, that's right. Well, that certainly wasn't. Aside from not cooperating. Oh, okay. Oh, I got a new. I got a new statement. So you were still able to make your desserts without Mr. Dover's assistance. I may have liked the design since, but I was confident in the flavor. Apart from the design, there were no major differences between my finals and semi-finals entries. It's his son. His son was helping taste it. Huh? That sure is strange. That's not how Uncle Ray remembers it. I'm pretty sure both the look and taste of your finals dessert scored poorly. Then there's no way he would have won the contest. Even the flavor, which he was so confident about, failed to materialize during the finals. Something must have changed besides Mr. Dover's cooperation. What? All those unanswered questions. Yeah, okay. It's his son. I have. It's gonna. I'm gonna do it. Okay, hold on. Ta da. Aside from. And I'm gonna present. Yes! I was right! I got my thinking hat on. I got my thinking ears on. <laughs> there was another difference between the semifinals and finals. This photo depicts your son. We know he came to visit you up until the finals. Mm, this is correct. What does that have to do with anything? Your son, who always came to see you through to to cave, gosh, who always came to see you through the semifinals, was not present for the finals. And then it was only in the finals that your flavor judged poorly. I don't believe this to be a mere coincidence. <clears throat> Your son's visits must have been very important to you, were they not? I like his little seahorse tattoo. A father can work miracles when his son is watching. With my sons cheering me on, I was able to make the most delicious desserts. Mr. Gustavia sure sounds like a good father, doesn't he? If what he's saying is the whole truth, one could say so. But just hearing his son's cheers wouldn't be enough to change the taste of his desserts. A confectioner, confident in his sense of taste, develops a taste disorder. It would have been difficult for him to maintain the taste of his desserts. Your son came to cheer you on. Was that really all he did? You seem very doubtful, Sir Prosecutor. In that case, I'll turn this around and ask you. What else could my elementary school son have done besides cheer me on? He tasted them. Duh. I'm sure your elementary school son would have remembered the taste of your desserts. Of course, my son always loved my desserts. In that case, he would have been able to taste test your desserts in your place. Ugh, what did you say? Earlier, you told us that you have a taste disorder. Right, we've been over this. I've never told this to anyone. Well done. As you say, I developed a taste disorder 18 years ago. No one else knew about your taste disorder. If Mr. Dover had found out, he would have ended your partnership. After all, you were in charge of the flavor. Wow, that's quite a long pause. Okay. But y'all need to see this. Who 
look at her. She's so precious. She's asleep on my desk. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, I just needed to show y'all that. <laughs> I just needed to, uh, oh my gosh, she's just, she's just so cute. Okay, like, try not to wake her up. She's, like, kind of, she got, like, that one eye, like, half open, like, like, mom, what are you doing? <laughs> mom, mom, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, sorry. Cat cam. <laughs> Anywho, um, long, long pause from uh, Mr. Gustavia. Sorry, I'm still adjusting my uh, chat so I can see it. <clears throat> Your son didn't just cheer you on. He also helped you determine if your desserts tasted correct. Ah. ah, I see. Mr. Dova's dessert was made the day before, so it still tasted good. <laughs> ah, what's so funny? What are you? S what you are saying is quite amusing, Sir Prosecutor. You say that my elementary school son assisted me as a taste tester. You are insulting my pride. Your pride? It's true, I had no sense of design 18 years ago. However, I won't lose to anyone when it comes to flavor. You claim I would cast aside my pride and rely on my own son? Don't get carried away with your foolish conjecture, you upstart. Ugh. His uh, upstart? Oh no, he really going in for it. In that case, I'm sure your son can confirm if my theory is mere conjecture. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, I no longer have a son! Not gonna lie, he reminds me of Jinpaichi Mishima. I don't know who that is. You're gonna have to enlighten me there, Sorcil. I wait. I'm looking at this picture. From Tekken. Hold on. Let me look this up. Oh yeah, I can totally see that vibe. I I see I see what yeah I'm picking up what you're putting down. Yeah, he kind of does he kind of does look like him. Um, he says he no longer has a son. I really, I really hope they take this in a direction that. Anyway, um, what? After my taste disorder was cured, I went to train in Zhengfa immediately. During that time, I severed all ties with my son. What? Don't tell me. You would even abandon your own son? That's not all. Even today, the whereabouts of his son are still unknown. The police have been searching, but they haven't been able to find any traces of him. You wish to confirm your theory? I welcome you to try. <laughs> Desserts are the only things that are important to me. Jesus Christ, man. After regaining my taste, my son no longer mattered. Damn, what? Order in the court. Mr. Gustavia's actions are certainly inhumane. However, we are not here to judge whether or not he's a good father. Good father. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I believe this is your loss. After all, there's no- Oh, gosh. After all, there is no evidence left from 18 years ago that could prove your theories. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth, is there nothing we can do? At this rate- We'll never find out the truth. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, where are those results? I wonder whose blood it could have been. I asked forensics to look into it, sir. Right, I leave it to you, Detective. I entrusted Detective Gumshoe with the last piece of evidence. If only I knew who that blood belonged to. Miles, there's still one thing that's bothering Uncle Ray. Was Mr. Gustavia's only reason for coming to the art gallery to check on the body? If he only wanted to confirm the body's presence, he wouldn't have needed to open the case. That's right. 
Is there a way we can prove this? There is one way. We just need that evidence from Detective Gumshoe. Prosecutor Edgeworth, what are you talking about? Mr. Edgeworth! Sorry to keep you waiting, sir! Oh, she's on edge now. <laughs> just the person I was talking about. Detective Gumshoe, I trust you have the test results. Of course, sir! I just got the report back from the lab. <laughs> Ready for combat. Detective, please be silent. So, this is the evidence that Prosecutor Edgeworth was talking about. Huh? Hey, what's this? This is the first I've heard of it! Oh my god, where has he been this whole time? Um... This was a request from me. I asked him to investigate a certain piece of evidence. Why? Why is everyone always helping you out? I'm the one in charge of the crime scene! <laughs> Mr. DeBest, I apologize for taking matters into my own hands, but how about we hear his report first? Ugh, shucks. Detective Gumshoe, what were the results? Here's the report, sir. The traces of blood found in the Gemini sculpture belong to the victim of the poison gas, Dane Gustavia. What are you saying? Good work, Detective Gumshoe. As I thought, my theory was correct. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? We too would like an explanation. What on earth does this blood, blood prove? This blood is something the culprit of the I-7 incident tried to conceal. It can't be. This. This blood was found inside the glass case of the Gemini sculpture. In other words, your blood was found alongside Mr. Dover's body. No! <laughs> Why would Mr. Gustavia's blood be in a place like that? If you intend to remain silent, then I'll reveal the truth myself. In the Gemini case, aside from the blood, we also found traces of salt and sugar. Salt and blood. And only one of Mr. Dover's sherbet desserts tasted salty. Come to think of it, I remember Miss Delicia saying the same thing 18 years ago. Oh, yesy, his sherbet was most delicious. Really? I wish I could have eaten some too. But there was one piece that was so salty I couldn't eat it. Salty? It's right here in the photo. It was part of that liar. That's the liar from the Gemini constellation. Exactly. For some reason, salt had been mixed into the liar. No other traces of salt were found in Dover's room. In that case, please explain. Where did the salt detected in the liar come from? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> Shit. Um. Uh. Oh, the salt lamp. I'm <laughs> so stupid. I was like, I don't know any. I don't have any piece of evidence that has anything to do with salt. What should I? Wh what will I do? I don't have any piece of evidence at all that has anything to do with salt. I'm so dumb. I'm so, so dumb. This is the rock salt lamp that was used as the murder weapon in the I-7 incident. I believe part of this rock salt lamp was mixed in with the sherbet from the liar. At the time of the murder, there were two rock salt lamps in Mr. Master's room. One of those lamps took Mr. Dover's life. We know that Mr. Dover's blood was left behind on the murderous lamp. However... There were no traces of anyone's blood found at the crime scene, Mr. Master's room. Because the killer disposed of all the desserts but no traces of blood into the streams of water, right? No other traces of salt were found in Mr. Dover's room. Ugh. Speaking of which, weren't the two rock salt lamps found in Miss Delicious's room also broken? It looks like both the lamps and the pillars are broken. Both of their light bulbs broken. 
Maybe they were dropped on the floor. We never did figure out why the other rock salt lamp was broken. Maybe Mr. Gustavia's blood was on the other lamp. Ugh. If your blood was found on the lamps at the crime scene, you would have been suspected. As the culprit, you would have needed to conceal all traces of your blood from the police. Don't tell me he concealed it in the Sherbet Liar. Exactly. Ew, that's gross! That's disgusting! I mean, that's another thing that would make something taste salty. Blood is very salty. It's got, like, iron in it. In it iron and... It's got iron and minerals in it. I mean, kind of, but... Well, blood tastes like... It's, rust, rust is kind of salty, because, like, oxidation and, and... Blood is oxidized and... Anyway, chemistry. A chemistry occurred. <laughs> I am not a chemist. You should ask my friend. My friend is a chemist, and so is her boyfriend. And they're going to be two great chemists, and I'm so proud of them. And I am <laughs> so not even near her caliber of intelligence. She would know. <laughs> the rock salt lamp and his blood were mixed into the sherbet liar and hidden inside the glass case. Unlike the fountain's water, the sherbet desserts would not be analyzed right away. Perhaps he had planned to dispose of the sherbet when the opportunity presented itself. Th then, the reason Gustavia came to this gallery... Eighteen years ago, the body and the evidence pointing to the killer were both stolen. Even the killer could not have anticipated that. There was no way of knowing when the body and the evidence would be discovered. So he planned to destroy the evidence before the Zodiac Art Gallery's grand opening. Holy shit, dude. Also, I can't believe he abandoned his son for pastries. Like, that's rough, man. Dane Gustavia, isn't it about time you confessed? You are the true culprit of the I-7 incident. Oh, are we gonna have a breakdown? Are we about to have an Ace Attorney breakdown? Everybody grab your popcorn. I think we're about to have an Ace Attorney breakdown. Monsieur Gustavia, you're the reason Monsieur Mestel is... Oh shit, he's not giving up just yet, is he? Oh shit, we not done. Mr. Gustavia. Could it be? After all this time, my crime is finally brought to light. The prosecutor and defense attorneys 18 years ago never even came close. Bravo! Bravo! Well done, sir prosecutor. So you admit that you killed Mr. Dover. It is true. I killed Isaac Dover. But he had only himself to blame. He had it coming. He had it coming. He only had himself to blame. If you'd have been there. If you'd have seen it. I bet you would have done the same. What do you mean? <laughs> Thank you, by the way. A little performance for y'all. <clears throat> Dover and I worked together in order to win the contest. No matter who won, we agreed that we'd share the angel's recipe. But on the day of the finals, he stabbed me in the back. Sir Dover, this isn't what we agreed to. Let's see, he's also French, right? I'm sorry, Gustavia. This is What? But I made your desserts for you. I'm the reason you got this far. And war puppy. Can you prove that you assisted me in any way? Dover, you... You were planning to betray me all along. Because of Dover's treachery, I was forced to make my... God, there's a... Mat just... In my face! <sighs> because of Dover's treachery, I was forced to make my finals entry on my own. I'm gonna get it. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, baby. I'm sorry. I woke up with a kitty cat. <laughs> it's just the third prosecutor said. My son assisted me every day until the finals. What about your pride as a confectionery artist? Oh, I see it. I'm gonna get it now. Fuck, I lost it. Damn it! 
It's just hard because they like fly up to the light and then they fly into the dark and I can't see them again. Ew, ew, I got it though. <laughs> Sorry guys. Ah, <laughs> oh, got it though. A proud chef loses the ability to taste his own creations. That's a feeling of upstart like you would never understand. Mastering the art of dessert making is my reason for being. This is my one and only pride. Committing murder for the sake of pride. That's another feeling I will never understand. To say nothing of abandoning your own son. Such a thought disgusts me. Before you judge me, first understand what happened 18 years ago. On the day of the finals, my son never came to assist me. Thinking back on it now, I suppose Dover had a hand in that as well. Huh? What exactly happened to your son? I do not know, but it no longer matters. Ever since that day, my son meant nothing to me. From what I hear, he's still missing. That's awful. Giving up on him like that. Without your son, you had no chance of winning, correct? Yes, and since I was guaranteed to lose, <clears throat> I needed a failsafe. During the afternoon tea time, I made my way to Sir Master's room. I just needed to take a photo of the cure through my taste disorder. I would, it would have all worked out. If only Dover hadn't interfered. Oh, oh, he caught him in the act. Oh, no. Ah, Gustavia. Trying to steal a picture of my prize, are you? That hardly seems sporting. You. Cure for taste disorders. Oh, you have a taste disorder, don't you? Ah, this is which. A pastry chef can't taste. Dover, you. Oh, damn. Puny wolf. Puny wolf, you are not positioned to oppose me. Why, you? When I attempted to hit Dover, he struck me and sent me flying. I crashed into one of the rock salt lamps. That was when my blood stand on it. So Mr. Dover wasn't the first one to be injured. To conceal my blood, I shaved away part of the rock salt lamp and mixed it into the sherbet. That's really gross! Really gross! After that, it became a part of the liar sculpture. So that's how you tried to erase your traces from the crime scene. Dover tried to blackmail me by using his knowledge of my taste disorder. If I didn't want it to become public, I was to pay him a large sum. So, that's the reason why you killed Isaac Dover. Wah, <laughs> exactly! What reason do I have to let those who obstruct me live? He was the, the one who drew first blood. I simply gave him his just desserts. Oh, haha, <laughs> get it? <laughs> so that was his motive. I carried the rock salt lamp that bore my blood into Dover's room. Then, I came up with a hiding place where it would not easily be found. I get it. That room contained plenty of tools for sculpted sherbet. Your deduction is spot on, sir attorney. It was the ideal place to shave away the rock salt. I then proceeded to coat the surface of the sherbet lyre with vast amounts of the salty fixture. So, salty mixture. I don't know what the fuck I just said. But why? Why did you try to pit the climb on Monsieur Master? You are wrong to blame me for that, Lady Catherine. If not for your unnecessary meddling, Sir Master would never have been a suspect. Damn. Why do you think I hid the murder weapon and fluorescent cloth in Lady Delicia's room? There is only one reason why you'd place a murder weapon in someone else's room. You wanted to pin the crime on Delicia. May? Yes, that is correct. Why me? As one who sought to be the world's best confectioner, I greatly respected Sir Master. It was never my intention to cast suspicion on him. But an insolent woman who dared to sully the contest with fake desserts. 
I have no problem letting someone like you take the blame for the crime. Th that makes me so sad. If you hadn't snacked on other people's desserts, the body would never have been found. It was when Sir Master would be judging Lady Delicia's room. That's when I finally saw an opportunity to freeze the body, but... Before I could move the body, Lady Catherine had already discovered it. Why? Why did you need to freeze Monsieur Dover's body? Why indeed? Monsieur Edwards, please tell us. Why would Monsieur Gustavia have needed to freeze the body? Well, I would say to throw off the time of death, but I feel like it's disguised it as an ice sculpture. Maybe this? Mr. Gustavia intended to freeze the body in order to throw off the time of death. If the time of death had coincided with the tea party, Mr. Gustavia would have been suspected. What is it, Minda? Are you something? <laughs> she like shot up for a second. It scared me. <laughs> oh, I was right. Okay, cool. That is correct. Preparations were necessary to freeze the body while I was preparing in Dover's room. I placed the body in the treasure chest in Sir Master's room. I could think of no better hiding place at the time. But thanks to that gluttonous pharmacist, the lid of the chest broke. But why did you disguise him as an ice sculpture? Once the body was discovered, there would be no time to throw off the time of death. To buy time, you needed to hide it someplace else. How holy... How could you hide Monsieur Dover's body within his, one of his own works? Yeah, this is really dark, actually. Like, all, great, like, everything. I mean, she, she threw it in the water, but, like, he froze the body, and, like, he, that's really fucking dark. All of this is really fucking dark, if you really look at it, like, with a discerning eye. It all would have worked out if the body hadn't been discovered while it was in Sir Master's room. If everything had gone according to plan, Sir Master would never have been arrested. So, because I discovered the body, it's my fault Monsieur Master was. Kate, don't take his words to heart. Even if suspicion hadn't fallen on Mr. Master, Mr. Delicious would have taken the fall. No matter who he targeted, the one at fault here is Mr. Gustavia himself. The detective in charge of the initial investigation was also a dunce. To think that he never reported the missing body to the prosecutor. Prosecutor Von Karma indicted Mr. Master without knowing the body had vanished. Ah, see, that would explain why he looked so flustered at the crime scene. Although, it's something that would stand out if you read the official documents. Could someone have intentionally distorted the information? At any rate, Von Karma found out about the missing body after he had made his indictment. And if he had let one person be acquitted, he'd have a stain on his much prided per perfect record. That's why he concealed the fact that the body was hidden and had Mr. Master declared guilty. But he did end up still getting a stain on his record because this was still the case where he was, like, the, the judge gave him a basically like a demerit for, um, like a strike against him for trying to fabricate evidence since he didn't have an autopsy report because he didn't have a body. So it still ended up with a stain on his record. Hmm. What are you saying? For 18 years, that man has taken the blame for your crimes. Don't you feel anything at all? <laughs> I don't care what you say. What a monster! I'm arresting him right here, right now, sir! I'm sorry, but... I'm afraid that would be impossible. Ah, here comes the statute of limitations thing. <laughs> so you figured it out. That's correct. You have no right to sentence me. What? But the culprit is standing right in front of us. <laughs> Allow me to tell you the reason why you can't arrest me. Oh, because the statute of limitations is not. Why you can't arrest me? <laughs> It's been 18 years since I murdered Dover. The statute of limitations for murder in this country is 15 years, is it not? In other words, it's impossible for you to arrest me. I only confessed my crime because the statute of limitations has expired. The statute of limitations for murder 
It's 15 years! Mr. Edgeworth, is there nothing we can do? Ugh. As long as the statute of limitations remains, arresting him is impossible. No way! My sincerest apologies, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Neither Mr. Gustavia's testimony nor your logic can be taken as official legal proof. The verdict of the trial 18 years ago cannot be overturned. What? What about the fact that Mr. Dover's body was hidden? Even if we can't arrest Mr. Gustavia, this should at least earn Mr. Master a retrial. Really? I wonder about that. Overturning a verdict of the goddess of law is much harder than you think. Is the PIC trying to justify the verdict from 18 years ago? <laughs> How unfortunate, Sir Prosecutor. Is there nothing I can do? Is there no way to continue pursuing Mr. Gustavia? Nah. Nah, because there's something. There's like a. Hold on. Hold on. Let's reread it. Let's all reread it together. We're going to check this out. All right, we're going to reread together. Statute of limitations. Murder is 15 years. Theft is 7 years. If the suspect flees to or lives in a foreign country, the time limit is on hold until the suspect returns. Didn't he go to Zheng Fa immediately after the murder? That could come into play. If possible accomplices are, are on trial, the countdown is stopped until the verdict is reached, then resumes. So... Well, didn't the... Hmm, that would only take a year, though. So that wouldn't, that wouldn't be enough. If the, if the trial had dragged on for longer, I feel like we could have, we could use the second one to justify it, or to justify that it was still within the statute of limitations, but I don't think that's what it's going to happen. Um, if charges are pressed to demand compensation, the statute is frozen for the length of that procedure. Maybe that one? I don't know. I think, I think the first one is going to be, because he, he went to Zheng Fa to study. But we'll see how this goes. Okay, so it's been 18 years, but hold it. No matter how many years have passed, your sin will never fade. Sir Prosecutor, I'm sure you must have realized by now. There's no way you can arrest me. Arresting you would be a piece of cake for someone like Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't that right, sir? Uh, hmm. I don't think it will be that simple. No, <laughs> it's impossible for you to arrest me. Um, it's yes, it's 15 years. It's possible that some of your actions 18 years ago were not affected by the statute. No, haha, <laughs> it's been so long. I've got nothing left to hide. Ask me anything you'd like. Very well. Could you explain to me what you did during these past 18 years? Certainly. After the contest. The medicine from the recipe book allowed me to fully cure my taste disorder. I then immediately headed to Zheng Fa. Immediately. Immediately. That's the key word. To train my design skills. So it wasn't seen ever since that case because he was in a foreign country. There it is. They're really hammering that in. Indeed. And I'm certain that I went abroad to train. About one year after that case. Right before Sir Master's final trial began. And thanks to my training, I am now a confectioner unparalleled in both taste and design. You should not be proud of a position earned through the sacrifices of others. <laughs> you can't bake a cake without breaking a few eggs. Sacrifices were necessary for my goal. That's horrible. Say what you will. The fact still remains that you cannot arrest me. I have to get more information out of Mr. Gustavia. Was there anything of note in his recent testimony? Yes, his training in Zheng Fa. Could you please add the details about your training in Zheng Fa to your testimony? Certainly. Afterward, I trained in Zheng Fa. Boom, babe. Oh, man. <laughs> Jumpy. 
I'm sorry. One of the conditions regarding the statute of limitations for murder is as follows. If the suspect flees to a foreign country, the time limit is on hold until the suspect returns. So the statute of limitations was suspended while you were overseas. That's right! The statute of limitations stopped while you were training in Jingfa! Indeed, it is possible that the statute of limitations has not expired yet. Mr. Gustavia, please tell us how long you stay in Jingfa. Um, it would be exactly three years. Three years? Wait, let's calmly think this over. The case occurred 18 years ago. The statute of limitations is 15 years and he was away for three. 15 plus 3 is exactly 18 years. I'm sure of it. Mr. Edgeworth, we did it. The statute of limitations hasn't expired yet. Mm. Oh, God. Exactly 18 years, you say. How amusing. So he realized. What? Why are you laughing? The statute of limitations still applies. Okay. It's frustrating, but the case occurred in December. It's April now, which means, strictly speaking, the case occurred 18 years and four months ago. His stay abroad wasn't quite enough. We were just a few months short. Not enough? That, that's... See, I knew that this was going to come into... The next two are going to come into play somehow. We'll see. Like I said, it's impossible for you to arrest me. <laughs> he must have known all about this when he confessed. Prosecutor Edgeworth, it really is a shame. It was just one year earlier. The statute of limitations would not have run out. Those who undermine the Goddess of Law's verdict must bear the burden of their crimes. It seems you are simply incapable. No! <laughs> this can't be the end. So, Monsieur Gustavia really is beyond the law switch. Kate, what are you thinking? Objection. If you're thinking of taking matters into your own hands, I implore you to reconsider. There still might be a way to bring this man justice. What? Miles, remember the facts of the case 18 years ago. Just as you were mistaken earlier, it seems Mr. Gustavia has also overlooked one key detail. Overlooked. Wasn't present during Mr. Mass's final trial, so he doesn't know the outcome of the trial. There may yet be a way for you to arrest him because he was charged as an accomplice. Because he was an accomplice. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Miles, look over that book on statute of limitations again. 17 years ago, Master was falsely declared guilty for a serious crime. Thanks to that verdict, we aren't out of ammunition just yet. Mr. Shields, you don't mean. Those who undermine the goddess of law's verdict must bear the burden of their crimes. I am Mr. Master's attorney. I can't use his suffering as a weapon in good conscience. For that reason, I leave the rest up to you. We got him now. The trial my father and Von Karma battled over. Can I use that to arrest Mr. Gustavia? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Absolutely raise an objection. Are you kidding me? His father and his father figure. My father and Von Karma, their paths diverged. One revealed the truth, the other concealed it. The path that I choose is the one that reveals the truth. I see no further reason to prolong this trial. I hereby find Dane Gustavia not guilty. Objection. Objection. Overruled. Gustavia, 
will stand in court for his crimes. Do you mean to say you have found a way to arrest Mr. Gustavia? Exactly. I'll show Judge Courtney the evidence that will shatter the statute of limitations. Take that. I submit this- no, that's not right, really? I find it hard to ascertain its relevance. Oh, they want me to- they want me to use the case document. I'm dumb. Anyway, let's figure- let's, let's <laughs> fix that. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I can see where your feelings are coming from, however. To see that you struggle so intensely, it seems you don't know when to give up. I will never give up. The fate of the case raised in my hand rests in my hands. God, I can't speak. Jeffrey Masters' trial went on for a year, a year-long trial where the truth was fabricated. There must be one more exception to the statute of limitations I can use. Take that. There it is. The I-7 case file. Which page are you referring to? That's a good question. Let me just... <laughs> um, no, not that one. Suspect data. That's what it was. Um, suspect data. The suspect data page. At the trial, Jeffrey Master was found guilty of being an accomplice to murder. And it took one year to arrive at this verdict. Right, that is indeed true. This book lists conditions in which the statute of limitations can be put on hold. The first, as I've said earlier, is if the suspect flees to a foreign country. But there's one more. If possible accomplices are on trial, the countdown is stopped until the verdict is reached. We needed one more year, and we got it. What are you saying? Sun Master was found to be an accomplice? That's right. Mr. Master was sentenced after you had left for your trip to Zhengfa. And he was found guilty of not being the culprit, but of being an accomplice. But it seems you didn't know that. That's absurd. Sun Master never committed any crime to begin with. You should certainly know this. Of course we do. That is why we're going to free him. To that end, we will shatter the one remaining obstacle in our way. The Statute of Limitations. You fled to Zheng Fa for three years, and Jeffrey Master was being tried as an accomplice for one year. Put it all together, we see that the total time limit for this case is 19 years. In other words, the statute of limitations is not over for you yet. Ha ha! We got him! The goddess of law is unerring in her judgments. However, it seems that the prosecutor at the time was not. I cannot believe it, but it seems like the case will have to be reopened. This is absurd. You cannot arrest me! For the last 18 years, an innocent man has suffered greatly in your stead. Mr. Gustavia, it's now time for you to atone for your crimes! I have finally earned my place as the greatest confectioner in the world to achieve that goal I cast everything aside even my own son what a shame you can't run from your crimes any longer Oof. oh now is the time for the breakdown and now it's time for a breakdown oh damn He's sculpting like a mad mother. Oh shit! And then he, what the fuck? Is that like a? Did he, did he, did he make confectionery? Fucking god damn it! What is it? seppuku? No, that's not. I was gonna make the Sudoku joke, but it's that it doesn't. Anyway, wow, that was a lot. <laughs> Dang Gustavia has been taken into custody, sir. Um, yeah. So, you're up next, right? Yes, I understand. Kate. Everyone, I am truly sorry for all the trouble I've caused. And thank you very much for catching Monsieur Gustavia. What you did cannot be overlooked. 
even if the crimes you committed were in response to a past injustice. As a prosecutor, I am terribly sorry for what happened. No, I am only getting what I deserve, since I was the cause of all of this. Kate, will you have me as your attorney? I'm not quite the same useless kid I was 18 years ago. I won't let them find you guilty. So much. I'm also super glad that she's not the murderer. <laughs> now I can like cosplay her and feel a little bit better. Oh my god. Look at her! She's so precious! Uh -huh. Also, I kind of ship them. Wait, I kind of I kind of ship her in shields. Is that bad? Is that bad? I kind of ship them. I kind of ship them though. Oh my god, look at her! My heart is so full. Anyway. Oh, Monsieur Shields. Yes, thank you so much. Oh my god. Ah! Sorry to interrupt, but it's time to go. Yes, all right. Oh, she's so graceful curtsying on her way out. Judge Courtney, I can't help but feel that you've been dishonest with me. Dishonest? Whatever do you mean? Nidna, stop jumping on stuff. You're scaring me. Are you, are you getting back at me for scaring you by scaring me? I'm sorry. You said that the verdict could not be overturned, but that was not the case. A reinvestigation and retrial were obviously required as soon as the missing body was found. I have no need to answer you. It seems. She oh gosh, that's. Mid that. <laughs> Silly girl. It seems she doesn't intend to ever give me an answer. Prosecutor Edgeworth, the PIC has you in its sights. They will receive a report on everything you did here today. And you will most likely be required to appear before them. Oh, damn. Now then, I shall take my leave. Hold on, Mr. Edgeworth caught the real bad guy. Didn't he do his job as a prosecutor? No matter how things turn out, I will never regret what I did here today. Mr. Edgeworth. He, prosecutor Edgeworth. What is it? Wait, are you always sticking your nose in cases that you're not even involved with? My duty is to reveal the truth, not only as a prosecutor. It's just who I am. I don't get it. As long as you continue to think that being the best is all that matters, I doubt you ever will. Well, I don't get that either. I'm going home. <laughs> You're being a butthole. I'm going home. I don't want to play with you anymore. <laughs> Man, something about doing that voice and being such a little shitbird is it's just so fun. It's just so fun. <laughs> I'm sorry if it's like a whole horribly grating and annoying, but I think that's kind of part of the charm. I don't know. Anyway, what was that all about? There is much he still needs to learn. M-I-L-E-Y! What, what is it? I knew Greggy's son could do it. I think... I think I might be falling for you! Thanks for helping, Jeffy. Well, um... Yo, Edgy! Great job solving the case! Well, I was busy drawing, so I didn't really catch all of that. Huh. Where did Katie and Jesse run off to? Larisse, you really weren't paying much attention at all, were you? Well, I hate to admit it, but Larry's doodles actually helped us out a few times. I should say something nice to him. Don't glare at me like that, I'm sorry! It was not my intent to glare at you. <laughs> that patented Edgeworth glare, you're just like your old man. Uh, is that so? Well, oh, sorry. Well, then, 
Uncle Ray's gotta go pay, gonna go pay Mr. Master a visit. You guys wanna tag along? I'd be happy to accompany you. Oh, me too. Can I give, can I give him the chocolates yet? Cause I wanna give him the chocolates. I still have the chocolates. So this Jeffrey Master, what's he like? Oh, he's a really nice and gentle guy. He's still doing his best to make people happy. He actually cooks desserts for the inmates. Nowadays, all the prisoners and guards look forward to snack time at three o'clock. Wow, that's nice. I want to eat his desserts too. So the chocolate cake we saw in the prison the other day, he was the one who made it? Oh, Gummy, why are you here? I heard everybody was coming to visit, so I escorted Mr. Master myself. Hello, one and all. I am Jeffrey Master. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, at your service. And I'm Mr. Edgeworth's assistant, Kay Faraday. Oh, it is a pleasure to meet you all. Mr. Master, Miles is your old defense attorney's son. You mean Mr. Gregory's? Your father has done so much for me. And yet, I betrayed his good faith when I made the false confession. I've heard the details from Mr. Shields. Mr. Master, I came here today to tell you everything we learned about 18 years ago. 18 years ago? Kate committed a crime for my sake. Why would she do such a thing? Miss Hall has been trying to prove your innocence for the past 18 years. She was willing to do whatever it took to save you. Kate... She shouldn't have gone through so much trouble for an old man who let her down. Mr. Master, I don't think you realize just how much Miss Hall cares for you. I have something here that clearly proves the two of you share an unbreakable bond. An unbreakable bond? Oh, here it is. This should give Mr. Master some peace of mind. Take that! These chocolates. Did Kate make them? She did. They're really sweet and tasty. She's been making these chocolates for the past 18 years so that she could give them to you whenever you returned. Kate. Oh, look at the happy tears. <laughs> I'm sure they're very, very sweet. Yes, they truly are. Unfortunately, I cannot give them to you now, but I can hand them over later in secret, pal. It is against the rules, but right now I don't have the authority to stop him. Oh, thank you very much. Say, you remind me of an old friend. Do you know of a Detective Bad? Of course I do! Detective Bad is my number one role model, pal! As he should be, because Detective Bad is an absolute excellent character, and he's amazing, and he's one of the best freaking Ace Attorney characters ever, period. Although, that being said, I really do need um, the Zheng Fa. Fuck, I always forget his name. I can see his face and I forget his name. Shi Long Lang. He needs to come back. If for nothing else other than I want to hear his theme again. <laughs> How uncanny. Talk about fate. Mr. Master, it's looking like we'll be able to get you out soon. I can only apologize that it took 18 years to do so. Raymond, I'm the one who should be apologizing. No, that's not it. What I really should be saying is... Thank you. Mr. Master, now it's my turn to wait for Kate. I'll make her favorite sweets every day until she returns. Please look after her, Raymond. You got it. Aw, oh, how happy. Yay! The I-7 incident, the case I inherited from my father. After 18 long years, it's finally coming to a close. Miles, thanks for today. I'm sorry for leaving that final decision to you. No, I, I made that decision on my own free will. Uh, what are you talking about? To arrest Gustavia, we had no choice but to use Mr. Master's false charge. To use Mr. Master's false charge, which I was originally supposed to protect him from. 
The attorney inside of me simply could not do it. So that's how it was. But, after this, Uncle Ray is going to try to clear away that false charge as well. Yes, I understand. What? But if they find out about the false charge, they won't be able to arrest Mr. Gustavia, right? That's true. It sure is a contradiction in the law. The way the law is right now, it isn't always completely right. A contradiction in the law? Well, who knows what'll happen? The law evolves and grows, just like all of us do. Just like Uncle Ray and Miles have grown up. You know? People in the law both grow. Miles, to fight crime as a prosecutor or to save people as a defense attorney, I want you to think carefully about how you want to live your life from now on. I will. Well, if you ask Uncle Ray, you'll always be welcome down at the office. Ah. Alrighty then, looks like it's time for Uncle Ray to get going. Next time I see you, I'll be sure to thank you again. Really though, thanks for today. <laughs> Bye sweet baby Ray. <laughs> Mr. Shield seemed to be in a bit of a hurry. Indeed. I should be the one thanking him. I was able to face my father's last case because of him. When I was young, I wanted to become a great defense attorney like my father. However, under Prosecutor Von Karma, I learned the ways of a prosecutor. Thanks to a certain friend, I was able to discover my own path in life. A certain friend. You know, whose, whose name is like the name of, a, like, a, a fictional bird-like creature? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Y'all know. <laughs> However, right now, there are forces trying to take me off the prosecutor's path. Maybe now is the perfect time to think about how I should live my life. Indeed. Edgeworth Law Offices. Gregory, I'm sorry that it took so long. Linda, you're so jumpy. Where are you going? <laughs> May have taken 18 years. But finally, we've proven Mr. Master's innocence. Miles, your son, helped me with that. The way he fought for the truth, he was just like you, Gregory. I'm still not the kind of attorney you were, but I will forever carry on the convictions I inherited from you. And if I can. <gasps> Together with him. Oh my god! <laughs> that was so good! Oh my god, that was so good! Oh, they're even posed the same! Oh my god! My heart! Oh my god, my heart is exploding right now! This is so good! It's so good! Oh, it's so good! Oh my god, it's so good! It's so good! I, oh my god, like, my heart, like, actually stopped for a second to fight crime as a prosecutor or to save people as a defense attorney. The path I choose is. Oh my God, what a cliffhanger. Obviously he's a prosecutor, but like, what the? Oh my gosh. Oh my God, what? Oh my God. I'm gonna save in the game and I'm also gonna save on my, my little save states. I'm gonna save all of my save states. Because I am paranoid. I'll just save the first thing. That'll work. The Forgotten Turnabout. Oh my goodness. I think I'm going to call it here. I know it's like a little bit early, but I think I'm going to call it here. I don't want to like start a new case. You know what? Actually, no. Fuck it. Give me like five minutes. I'm going to start a new case. So I'll, I'll be right back, y'all.
Okay, I'm back. Um, sorry, I forgot to switch to my Ace Attorney one. There we go. Okay, I'm back. So I'm gonna I want to stream for a little bit longer. I want to start this next case. Um, we'll just get like the the intro, you know, the intro to the case. I really I'm excited. I'm having too much fun. I love Ace Attorney so much. Okay, forgotten turnabout. From here on out, let the council begin. Oh shit! Let our members discuss this matter with a clear conscience of the goddess of law. <gasps> Today's deliberation shall be about Mile Edgeworth's aptitude and ability as a prosecutor. <gasps> Who are you? <gasps> Why are you wearing that raincoat? She's too important. April 5th, 1.23 p.m. Hi, prosecutor's office. It looks like Gumshoe is losing another more of his, uh, another, <laughs> he's probably getting, getting his, uh, pay docked again. Gosh. Sorry, I had to adjust. It was a little uncomfortable. There is another gnat. Calm down. You're getting dust everywhere. And I've already cleaned this room three times since this morning. Well, now you'll need to do it a fourth time. You're way too calm, sir. What if they actually take your badge? A decision has not yet been made. But it looks like it's pretty much decided. Don't you remember what Judge Courtney said? Prosecutor Edgeworth, the PIC has you in its sights. They will receive a report on everything you did here today. And you will most likely be required to appear before them. I have been ordered to attend the meeting. That is all. I hate this, sir! I won't be able to work with you anymore! As a detective, perhaps you should welcome this turn of events. You would no longer have to work with such a troublesome prosecutor as myself. Why would you say something like that, sir? The problem is with the PIC and their false accusations. Mr. Edgeworth, don't tell me. You actually want to become a defense attorney? He hesitated. Because you can't do that! Being a prosecutor is exactly what makes you a prosecutor Edgeworth, sir! Is Gumshoe like the, the voice of the audience or something? Like, what is happening? A defense attorney, huh? I became a prosecutor because of the incident where I lost my father. However, the real reason I became interested in the legal world was because my father, who passed away, had been a defense attorney. To fight crime as a prosecutor or to save people as a defense attorney. I want you to think carefully about how you want to live your life from now on. Are you listening, sir? I don't like this one bit, but... Oh, sorry, I thought they said something else. There is no need for you to be so pessimistic. Maybe my replacement will be more lenient during your salary assessments. I see. That way I can eat more than just instant noodles every day. Wait, what am I saying? That's not the point here! He was actually imagining it. <laughs> Maybe you should pay him more, Edgeworth. We're busy right now. Come back later, pal. Oh, who's this? Oh my gosh, who is she? What a little cutie pie. Wait, what the fuck is her hat say? Safety first or something? Oh god, what voice should I give her? I should give her like a really delicate voice. Look at her, she's like a freaking, she's like a freaking doll. Um. Paging Mr. Edgeworth, is that Mr. Miles Edgeworth here? Mr. Edgeworth is busy now. I'll listen to whatever you have to say later, pal. Mm, this isn't good. Your face has become all red. Um, a red face, a red face. 
Uh, like I said, we're kind of busy now, so... I've got it! You have a tummy ache, right? This calls for an injection stat! Please roll up your sleeves. Ah! No, no, no! I'm perfectly healthy! Who might you be? Ah, uh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Karen Chinson. I'm a registered nurse at Die Young Hospital. Die Young Hospital! <laughs> Bruh. 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 Die Young Hospital. Die Young Hospital. That's terrible. I'm sorry, but nobody here is sick. You must have the wrong room. Are you Mr. Miles Edgeworth? You have such great wrinkles between your brow. Could it be lupus? This calls for an injection. Oh god, maybe I should have given her like a little more. No, you know what? I like it. I'm, I'll give her like a Haru, Haru uh, Okumura voice where she's like really delicate, but she wants to just like stab things a lot. It works. It works. It's not lupus. Just tell me what business you have with me. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Actually, there's someone who would like to see you. Please wait a moment. I'll call them right here now. I'll call, I'll call them here right now. Wait. <laughs> she left, sir. I wonder who she's gonna bring. Hmm, if she's bringing someone from the hospital, could it be a patient, sir? Maybe it's someone who was traumatized by your harsh words. Damn, savage. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> See, when you glare at me like that, it feels like I'm gonna have a heart attack. You could send someone to the hospital with that. Is it really that bad? I'm just being my normal self, though. It's canon. Edgeworth has resting bitch face. Sorry for the wait. Well, what do you think? Oh, how sad. <gasps> Is that K? Is that K? Is that K? Is that K? What do I think? Um, do you not recognize me? Now that she mentions it, I feel like I've met her before. Um, this card. Your name was written on it. Does she have amnesia? Do you know who I am? I'm sorry, I know I was supposed to be reading the line. I just, I'm kind of shocked right now. Uh, I'm sorry, what did he do? He's like, Mr. Edward, did you really send her to the hospital? Of course not. But this is your business card, sir. It clearly says, Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth. Um, th that's true. I- I'm terribly sorry. I'm, uh, well... The truth is, this girl suffers from memory loss. <laughs> memory loss? Yes, that seems to be the case. Ah, uh, her parents should be worried sick right now. They probably haven't been able to sleep. I doubt they've gotten more than eight hours. Isn't that plenty of sleep? I see, it sure sounds horrible, but it's all right now. Since she has that business card, she must be an acquaintance of Mr. Edgeworth's. Just leave her to us, pal. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Indeed. We might be able to verify her identity, at least. Would you really do that for me? First, I'd like you to tell us everything you know. That's our Mr. Edgeworth. You have nothing to worry about now, miss. Oh my god, it's Kay. It's Kay, and it's like really fucking with me. Oh my god. Also, she looks really pretty with her hair down. Oh my god. Oh. oh my god. Sorry, ruining the moment with the fruit fly. Um, but still, where to begin? What should I ask her first? Miss, do you remember your name? My name? I'm terribly sorry. She's been like this ever since yesterday, you know. Hmm, so you found her yesterday. Wow, that's amazing! How'd you know? 
What a tiresome woman. I found her stumbling around late last night, so I took her in. I wanted to help her out, so I looked through her things. So that's how you found my business card. Did she have anything else with her? Nothing to reveal her name or address. Ah, oh, but... She was wearing this when I found her. It's an unusual design, don't you think? What? This badge is... What? The, the Yachigarasus! That means... It couldn't be... Are you Kay? Kay? I mean, it has to be, right? Like, if it's not, then, like, would, what would that be? Like, what? You are K, right? I am K? K, don't you remember me? I mean, you'd always call me Gummy, pal. Gummy. I would call one of my elders something so rude. Ah, I'm so sorry. What a horrible thing I did. I feel like my heart is going to burst from guilt. Just, just what happened to you, pal? You become so sensitive. If you're this sensitive and delicate and frail, then you're not even K anymore. You're someone else, pal. Watch your words, detective. If you say that. It almost sounds like K isn't sensitive or delicate at all. Well, I can't deny there is some truth to what he says. Um, what sort of per person was I before I lost my memory? Well, for starters, your name was K Faraday. A cheerful girl full of spirit and vigor and a great thief. Great thief? Thief? Yes, to put it frankly, a great thief steals valuables from people, people's drawers and safes. S steal? I caused so much trouble for others? Ah, I'm so sorry, I never imagined I would be a criminal. Maybe losing my memory was retribution for my crimes. This is so sad! What the fuck? No, you didn't actually... Uh, this is so messed up, sir. Yeah, it is so messed up. But it does sort of make sense, you know? These gloves and stuff, they look just like what a thief might wear. Ah, those gloves! Yes, she was wearing them when I found her. I had her change clothes, so I'm holding on to them for now. Hmm, something appears to be stuck on her clothes. Perhaps it has something to do with Kay's memory loss? I'll send it down to the I'll send it down to the lab later and have them check it out, sir. Good. I will be counting on you, Detective Gumshoe. At any rate, these really look like a thief's clothes, don't they? I am a criminal. It's true, you were a great thief, but never once did you commit a crime. That alone, I can assure you. Is that so? It's probably better if I don't press this issue any further. I'm really sorry for not remembering you. Hi! Hello, hello! Um, what kind of relationship did we have? Hmm, well, that's rather difficult to explain. Kay, you were Mr. Edgeworth's assistant! Oh my! So then... Oh, thank you! I try. <laughs> oh my, so then a prosecutor is the kingpin of a great thief? Uh, no, that's not what I meant, pal. The last time I met Kay was the day before yesterday. <clears throat> just what did she do from from then? Just what did she do from then up till now? Miss Jensen, was the badge the only thing this girl had on her? She did have some other things, but I don't think they will be very helpful at all. I don't mind. Please show them to me. Well then, I'll give them to you one by one, okay? Stop crying, Kay. You're pulling at my, you're pulling at my heartstrings too. This is a Jamma Ninja mask. Maybe she went to a superhero show or something. Hmm. This seems to be a letter addressed to Kay. This is a ticket stub, and this is a flower made of cloth, like the ones you usually see in restrooms, sir. A corsage. It's usually primarily, <laughs> it's used primarily as an accessory for women. Well, wow, that's everything. Did you find anything out? Uh, not really. They were just a bunch of random things. I'll have to look them over in more detail later. Jammin' Ninja. A 
letter. A ticket stub. Oh, thank you for the posture check. And yes, I will hydrate with water. With water. Got my water. I will also pet Midna if I can. Aw, she's underneath me. I will pet her right now. Come here, baby. Come say hi to everybody. Mm, sleepy girl. Oh, you have some plans for my character? Oh, I'm so excited to hear them. Are we? Can we put them in my little, uh, my little private? Ch I can't wait to play again. I know we we kind of had to kind of. Uh, I felt bad. I hope that it wasn't like canceled this week because of me. Secret. Oh, secret plans. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I, I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Midna, so snuggly. What are you doing? This is a sleepy little cat. Such a baby. Go get you some dinner. Both of yous. Both of yous. Anywho. Need to check my posture. <clears throat> Oh, this is horrible. Kay's lost her memory. Oh, gosh, now I have cat hair like all in my mouth. <laughs> How do we get her back to normal? Calm down, detective. I've already thought of something. Oh, as I would expect of Mr. Edgeworth. So, what did you find out, sir? Look at this ticket stub. Oh, it's a ticket for viewing platform of Grand Tower. Uh, Miss Nurse, do you know something about the Grand Tower? Of course I do. It's a super famous dating spot, after all. They say that if a couple holds hands up there, they'll be together forever. <laughs> the timestamp on the ticket is from yesterday. Moreover, it's only valid on the day of issue. <laughs> Look how they they very carefully put it not as 20, because then it would have said 420. Haha. <laughs> Since she only has the stub, she must have used it, right? It's very likely. Well then, let's go. Uh, right now, sir? The cause of Kay's memory loss is hidden in her actions. But what about the PIC? It's still too early for me to be summoned there. Um, so should I leave Kay with you then? That is what I would prefer. Kay, you're fine with that, right? Uh, yes, please. Thank you very much. Well, I have to get back to work, so if anything happens, please contact the Dai Young Hospital. If you guys need an injection, I'll be there anytime, anyplace! Yes, I understand. I don't think I will call her for an injection, though. Well then, let's go, Detective. And you too, Kay. Yes, sir! Thank you for helping me. She looks so sad in her little PJs. I just, wow. Um, according to the pamphlet, this building is 50 stories tall. It's mostly filled with offices, though. Only the viewing platform is open to the public. Here you go, sir. I just got this at the reception desk. Good, thank you. Oh my gosh, these freaking gnats are everywhere, and I don't understand why. Ah! Keeps landing on my face. <laughs> I'm an embarrassment. It's fine. Well then, let us head inside, inside immediately. Eek! The Grand Tower! The Grand Tower! What, the what now? Oh my god, what? 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 What is happening? No, you can't. Please stop. Please, I beg of you. It's no good unless I drink fresh milk. My thoughts won't wait. What is happening? What's wrong, pal? Did something happen in the Grand Tower? Cut! Cut, 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 cut. Oh my god, it's her! Oh my god, I haven't seen her since the first game! Uh, excuse me, we're sort of in the middle of shooting a movie and, um... Oh wait, what? I should give her, like, a nerdy voice. Mm, I suspected as much. We're sorry for any trouble we've caused you. Detective Gumshoe, 
I'm sorry, pal. I really thought the tower was gonna collapse or something. Whatever. Hey, director, I'm taking a break. I I'm sorry. I I'm really, really sorry. What a relief. It looks like the tower's collapse was prevented somehow. Explaining all this to Kay as she is now would take more time than it's worth. Well then, we should get going. That was weird and interesting. What was, that? what was that? Just like a cameo from Homegirl from the first? Oh wow, what a really nice viewing platform. Wow, what a view! I bet I can see my house from here! Eek! The, the wind is really strong up here! Everything should be fine as long as you stay close to me and Mr. Edgeworth, pal. If you start to blow away, one of us will be sure to catch you. It's not as if she's a kite. Okay, do you recognize this place? I don't know. Was I really here? Maybe if I get her to talk a bit, it will help jog her memory. Okay, just tell me whatever you remember. Anything will do. Okay, but I don't know how much help I'll be. Wow, this is an interesting way to ask her what she remembers. She looks so pretty with her hair down, and it's just really, it's such a shame that, like, she's injured like this, and she's so sad looking. Did I really come to a place like this? It's so high up, and the wind is so strong. It's frightening. I just can't remember. I can't remember anything at all. I'm sorry, just as I thought, it's impossible. Her memory isn't clearing up at all, huh? I'm sorry, it's a bit pathetic, isn't it? You're both going out of your way for me, but I'm not helping at all. You're doing just fine. You'll have- you have memory loss, after all. All right, Mr. Edgeworth, remember to go easy on her, sir. Normally, you have this really intense and kind of scary look on your face. You're not helping, detective. So we're probably gonna have to present her with something that she'll... Yes, because you have a ticket stub. Okay, could you take a look at this piece of evidence? Okay. Uh, my head, it's... A man in red clothes. Furrowing his eyebrows at me, it's... Kind of scaring me. Okay, that that's me, isn't it? <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, it seems that's not related to her testimony at all, sir. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. We'll, uh... Hold it. This ticket stub proves that you were indeed here. But I really don't remember coming here at all. I don't think I would want to come to a place like this. Hold it. You used to love places like these, though. Was that really me? We're so high up, just looking down makes me dizzy. I think these kinds of places should be shut down. What if an elderly person or a small child were to fall off? The railing here is quite high. I think your worries are unfounded. Is that so? You say you don't remember anything. In that case, is there anything that looks familiar? Looks familiar? Um... Ah! The cherry tree! What about the cherry tree? I was standing under that cherry tree. That's right! I was taking shelter from the rain because it was raining then! And there... A red... I saw... Something red. Hmm. She was under the cherry tree while it rained. And... From there she saw something red. Um, is something wrong? It's nothing. Could you add that last part to your story? Under the cherry tree, I feel like I saw something red. Something red. Uh, it's not really red, is it? Um... A red... What exactly? A red... Something or other. It was something red. That's all I can remember about it. Speaking of things that are red here, could it be that stand over there? Stand? A red stand. Ah, that's right! I saw someone walking towards me from the other side of that stand. 
And then what happened? And then, um, I'm sorry. It's all right, simply add everything you just said to your story. Um, that's right, someone was walking towards me from the other side of that stand. By that stand, do you mean the stand directly behind you? Yes, from behind that red stand, someone came walking towards me. I saw it from under the cherry tree. You've been saying that you saw someone. Does that mean you didn't see their face? Or was it a person you didn't know? I'm sorry, that much I don't know. So someone came walking towards her from behind the red stand. And she saw that from beneath the cherry tree. Was it this? Nope. Wait, Kay, have a look at- no, this- What about it? I would think the connection between you and this piece of evidence- oh, okay. Oh god. Damn it! I- I fucked up. It can't be so rough on her in condition, sir. Okay, so I guess- I guess I should- I have to press every single thing first. Is there nothing else that comes to mind? It doesn't have to be related to the case. Even if it's not related? Um, well... Ah, uh, I, I remember that the stand was sell, sell Oh my gosh. The stand there was selling cotton candy. I don't know why that was so hard. That's, like, basically my own voice. <laughs> I just, like, do it in a... It, Edgeworth and Kay's voice are basically just my voice. I try to put Edgeworth at the lower part of my register, and then Kay gets a little more, like, that customer service, like, high-pitched... Like, feminine flair, but they're- I don't know why that was difficult, it's just me! <laughs> if you're hungry, you should just say so. I'll make sure to buy one for, for you later, pal. Thank you very much. I look forward to it. There's not much I can do unless I can draw more information from her. For now, I'll press her for more details and see what I can find out. Um... Uh, okay, no, that was... Okay, so... Okay, so I pressed pretty much everything. Cotton candy. Cherry tree candy stand. Kind of hard. What does the letter say? Dear Kay, I promise that I'll get back. That I'll get it back for you. Your most precious memory, Jill. Jill? Who's Jill? Let's look at this badge. There's really not much to it, huh? It's emblazoned with the mark of the Yasakarasu, and it really stands out. I doubt there are any thieves who would actually wear it. Hmm. Damn it! I don't fucking know, man! walking towards me from the other side of that stand. I guess there's no way that somebody could... Okay, yeah, that's- I guess that was what- I was like, what am I supposed to say to her? 
So you're saying that someone came from behind that stand and walked directly towards you? Yes, someone came right up to me. Then that someone must have been a ghost. No, it was a person, I'm sure of it. If this is where you were under the cherry tree, then someone behind the stand wouldn't have any ground to stand on. They'd be floating in midair. No person should be able to stand there. Eek! But I, I'm not lying. Someone, oh my God. This, oh my, this sprite animation is very reminiscent of like your turn to die. Oh God, this is really sad and dark. This game is way darker than a lot of Ace Attorney games. What the hell? Someone red, someone in red was on the other side of the stand. They were walking towards me, uh, getting closer and closer. And then the person, the person, oh my God. What's, what's, oh my god, what is happening? What's wrong? <laughs> Calm down, it's all right. Me and Mr. Edgeworth are both here for you, pal. I, I was pushed off. That person in red, yes, they were wearing a red raincoat. Oh my god, is this finally Shelly to kill her? Is he finally back? K overload. Someone in a red raincoat was walking in midair. And furthermore, they pushed her off this building. Nonsense. There's no way she could be alright after falling from a building this high. Oh my god. Attention everyone! Please remain where you are! What's wrong, pal? I'm a detective. Tell me what's going on. Sir, a body was just discovered in this building! A body? Oh sorry, that was in Gumshoe's voice. Who is the victim? We're currently investigating the details, but the victim is a woman. We have verified that her name is... What? 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> is that actually not... No, that's K. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna actually end it here now. I feel like that's a good cliffhanger to get us started for the next time. So I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save it right, right here. Holy shit, dude. Holy shit, dude. What? 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 Oh my god. This is about to get wild. Duh. This is about to get balls to the wall crazy. Oh my god. Wow. Okay, so we solved a case, opened another one. I feel like we made a lot of good progress tonight, and it was definitely an adventure. So, wow. Thank you guys for tuning in. Holy crap, I'm like reeling right now. I feel so bad. I can't believe, I can't believe Kay has, um, has lost her memories. Oh my god. Um... Wow. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for letting me have like an Ace Attorney week. Um, I love this game. I love all the Ace Attorney games. It's one of my favorite series, so I, I had a really good time. Um, I will uh, probably be posting a poll on my Twitter um, pretty soon over the weekend to like kind of choose the game for Monday. I want to do like another new game, kind of like I, I did before. Um, I think it might be might be time to do that. Um, but then I'll be uh, I'll also post the rest of my schedule and whatnot on Twitter. Um, Give me a follow. Drop that. Drop me a follow on my social medias if you haven't already. Drop me a follow here if you haven't already and you liked what you see. Um, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, pretty much. Uh, in case, you know, unless some emergency happens, in which case I put it on my Twitter. So, uh, yeah. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, I think I'm going to do a little raidy raid. How about that? It's a little fun Friday raid. Let's let's try that. I'm going to raid my, my good friend uh, Jules over here. Looks like sh uh, she's playing Back for Blood. I'm not sure what that is, but it looks fun. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to raid raid her. Um, if you guys want to join in, you can. If not, it's cool. It's cool. Um, I, I'll, I'll be hanging out there for a little while while I chill. But, uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time. <laughs>